Hello, I'm Richard Brown, the Chief Technology Officer at R3. In this short video, I'm going to show how to download the new demo bench for Corda and use it to demonstrate some of the key features and some of the key differentiators in Corda to your colleagues or potential customers and clients. So we'll begin by downloading the Corda demo bench. Um, you can download the Corda demo bench from corda.net slash downloads. I'm showing that page here, and here you can see Corda Demo Bench Milestone 11 with installers for both Windows and the Mac. What I'll actually be showing is Milestone 12, which is the beta release of Corda, um, and that will be available on this website very soon. So I've already downloaded and installed the tool. And when you first run it, when you run it for the first time, um, this is what you see. This is the first page you see of the Corda Demo Bench. The thing to be aware of and the thing to keep in mind with the Corda Demo Bench is that this is a fully functioning Corda network that you're about to build. So this tool allows you to start as many real Corda nodes as you like. They'll all be on the same network running on your laptop, either a Mac or a PC, and they'll be connected to each other and they'll be able to transact with each other. So this allows you to show for real a live Corda demo. What we're seeing here is the first page, and this allows us to get started with our network by configuring and starting a notary. A notary is um, either a single server or far more likely and far more commonly, a cluster of servers um, which are responsible for confirming transactions. For the purposes of this demo, we'll just start a simple and non-validating notary. So I clicked Start Node at the bottom right of the screen, and what's happening um, now is a, a real Corda node is about to start. So we see um, the, um, the, the startup screen, um, and this is Corda um, beginning in the background. So we see that the first Corda node has started, um, and it's, it's, it's ready to go. What we're now going to do is start several more nodes, and then we'll get them to start talking and, and working with each other. So I click at the top right here to start a second node. And this, well, this node is going to be an issuer of cash. So you can imagine this, imagine this as being the Bank of England or the Federal Reserve, um, you know, like a, a central bank that's able to issue currency. Um, we're a bit whimsical in our team, so we've given them um, uh, silly names by default. So this, this, this bank, this issuing, cash issuing bank based in the UK, let's say it's in Liverpool and its legal name is the Bank of Breakfast Tea. But of course we can change its location and we can change its name, but we'll just go with the default here. And um, for this node, it's going to be an issuer of cash. So we start the cash, we install the cash service that allows it to receive cash, and we say it's going to be an issuer, and we start this node. And exactly the same thing is going to happen. This node will start up, it will register with the network map, which we'll see in a moment, um, and once started, it will be able to um, issue cash and transact with, with other nodes on the, on the network. While that's happening, I'm going to start several other nodes as well. So let's add another node. And by default, this is a bank in the US, the Bank of Big Apples. We could change the name again, but we'll go with the default. And we'll have this to be an issuer of dollars. And let's start this one as well. And let's get going. Let's do the third one, a bank in Paris, the Bank of Baguettes, or perhaps that should be the Banque de Baguette. Um, and this bank, um, actually, this is just going to be a, a holder of cash. We're going to imagine this is a commercial bank that has reserve accounts at two central banks, the ones we've just started, but this will just be a regular bank. So it's just going to have, just going to have the, the cash contract. We can start this one. And while that's starting, I'm actually going to prepare another node, but we won't start this one just yet. We'll come back to this one later. So we'll add another node, and this one is going to be in Geneva, the, the Bank of Fondue. And this is also going to be an issuer of cash, this time of Swiss francs, for obvious reasons, um, but we won't start it, and that's so I can make a key point a bit later. Um, if we switch back, we can see that the Bank of Baguettes has already started, and we can see that the Bank of Big Apples and the Bank of Breakfast Tea are still running in the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is launch the Corda Explorer for the Bank of Breakfast Tea. Now, the Corda Explorer is a graphical user interface that allows us to connect to a specific node and look inside it to see what's happening. So I've just started the Corda Explorer for the Bank of Breakfast Tea, and as expected, nothing has happened yet. There are no transactions in the network. There's no cash in the treasury. It's, it, it's silent and, and, and ready to go. But already, if I go to the network view, we can see something interesting. Now, let me just shrink these so they get out of the way. And we can now see a map of the network and we can see the Bank of Big Apples, 
the bank of breakfast tea, which is the one we're looking at, the bank of baguettes, and the notary that we started first. Of course, the bank of fondue hasn't been started yet, so it's not showing on the network, um, on the network map. So let me just zoom in because this will be important later when we see transactions moving around the network. What I'm going to do here, the first thing I'm going to do is, is issue some cash. So remember, the Bank of Breakfast T is, um, is, a, is, is, is playing the role of a central bank. So let's go into the Cash Cord app, the Cash Cord application, and, and issue some currency. So we might imagine that we're doing this because the, um, the bank to which we're issuing this currency has deposited money via the RTGS or because the, there's an amount owing. Um, but we won't cover that any further in this, in this demonstration. We're just going to issue some cash that's issued by the Bank of Breakfast Tea and will be um, issued to um, the, the Bank of Baguettes. So we click the new transaction um, button and the type of transaction will be an issuance transaction. We're issuing new cash. The receiver, as we say, will be the Bank of Baguettes. The currency is automatically um, limited just to GBP, British pounds. And, and let's go with a million pounds, two, three, four, five, six, a million pounds that we're going to issue to the Bank of Baguettes. So the transaction has been issued to the network um, and you saw very quickly um, it flicked onto the screen and disappeared. That's because what actually happens behind the scenes is the cash is self-issued. So it's issued by the Bank of Breakfast Tea to itself and then it's immediately moved. It's immediately paid to the, the Bank of Baguettes. And we can see that in the transactions view. If we go here, we see there are two transactions. We see there's an issuance transaction where from nothing, we've created a new state object representing one million pounds where the issuer is the Bank of Breakfast Tea and the owner is the Bank, bank of Breakfast Tea. So they're both the um, holder of the they're both the, the owner of the liability and of the asset. But then we also see immediately afterwards a single tra separate transaction that has transferred that, that, that cash owned by the Bank of Breakfast Tea. That transaction has transferred that cash to the Bank of Baguettes. And we see it's been both signed by the Bank of Breakfast Tea to authorize the, the, the transfer of the cash, and it's been notarized, which means it's been confirmed. That, tra that transaction has been confirmed by the network and is now final. And we'll see that on the other side in a moment. So that's all we need the Bank of Breakfast Tea for. So I'm going to close the Bank of Breakfast Tea's Explorer. And now let's switch to the Bank of Big Apples, and we'll do exactly the same thing. We we'll launch the Explorer for the Bank of Big Apples, so that allows us to look at and control the the uh, the Bank of Big Apples is um, node as well. And, and while that's happening, um, I'm going to start the Bank of Baguettes um, Explorer in the background because we'll be wanting that very soon after this part of the demonstration. Okay, so um, while that's happening, we're back to the Bank of Big Apples, and we're going to do exactly the same thing as before. We're going to issue some cash this time some US dollars, and we're going to issue them to the Bank of Baguettes. And in fact, as I've been talking, you see the Bank of Baguettes is Explorer has started behind the scenes, um, and we'll switch to that in a moment. But back to the Bank of Big Apples, let's issue some cash, the US dollars, so issue cash to the Bank of Baguettes, US dollars, and maybe we should do $500,000 this time. Um, execute. And we should see the same thing again. This time, the transaction has been processed so quickly it didn't even it didn't even appear in the user interface here. So now we can close the Bank of Big Apples. So what we've done so far is we've issued cash GPP from the central bank in the UK, and we've issued US dollar um, liabilities from the um, bank in the US. And now, as we look at the Bank of Baguettes' Explorer and we look at their cash. We can see the, um, the, 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 the outcome we were trying to achieve. They hold a million dollars as a liability of the Bank of Breakfast, Breakfast Tea, and they hold $500,000 as a liability of the Bank of Big Apples. Now, this is a really important point about the architecture of Corda and something that makes Corda completely unique. Um, unlike other platforms that have, have architectures based on concepts such as channels and, and other complicated concepts, um, Corda doesn't work that way. Corda's privacy model is based on individual transactions, individual state objects. So here we have you know, two completely different issuances, you know, central bank money in the US and central bank money in the UK, all visible on a single screen in one node. And um, in a subsequent demo, you could imagine 
creating transactions that, 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 that involve both of those transaction types, both of those currency types. Um, and you'd be able to do that with the privacy guarantees that you'd expect in, in a financial application. Um, architectures based on brittle um, locked down channels don't allow this. You find that assets get trapped in one channel or another, and then it then becomes impossible to move those assets from one party to a new party on the network or to perform sophisticated um, delivery versus payment or payment versus payment transactions because the assets are trapped, they're stranded in different channels. And Corda doesn't have that issue. Corda has um, the privacy we, we require, but also the full flexibility to combine different transaction types and different issuances in, in single transactions. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's now show how um, how two banks could actually transact with each other. So we have the Bank of Baguettes um, here. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch that, um, that Swiss bank as well. And we can show how you can make a payment from one bank to another and how those transactions move across the network. Um, and, and the reason I didn't start the Swiss bank until now is because what I want to show is how the event-driven um, architecture, the, um, the entirely real-time architecture of Corda, is, is embedded in its design to its core. So this is the network map for the Bank of Baguettes. This is its view of the world. And I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see that in continental Europe or in, in Europe in general, we have the notary in Rome, the Bank of Baguettes in Paris and the Bank of Breakfast Tea in Liverpool. And what I want you to see as I start the Swiss Bank's node is how once it started up, it immediately registers with the network map and is visible to the Bank of Baguettes. Um, the entire architecture of these nodes is event driven. We don't force users into this batch approach where transactions are inappropriately and unnecessarily batched into slow to confirm um, blocks or other chunks. Um, when something happens in the network, the relevant parties are informed immediately. So let's switch back to the demo bench, which is our controller for all of this, um, and go to that node that I prepared earlier, the Bank of Fondue in Geneva. And let's click Start Node to start um, to start this um, this this node's um, um, boot up sequence. So behind me in the demo bench, the same thing is happening as before. The Bank of Fondue is going through its startup process, and in a few seconds, it will have finished starting up. It will have registered with the network map, and we will then see it appear on the network map just like that. So the Bank of Fondue has registered, fired its event into the network, and it's now visible to everybody else, um, exactly as we expected. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a payment from the Bank of Baguettes of US dollars to the, um, the Bank of Fondue. And, and when I do this, what I want to show is how the selective data visibility of Corda means that not all nodes receive that data. The data just goes to where it needs to go. Um, and to do that, I'm going to start the Explorer for the Bank of Fondue as well. And that way, when I send the transaction from the Bank of Baguettes, we can look at the, um, the activity on the network from the perspective of the Bank of Fondue, and we'll see which nodes receive the data and what happens. So here's the Explorer for the Bank of Fondue. If I look at the network, um, and minimize these views so we can um, see what's happening, um, and I'll zoom in. And what I want you to look at when I make the payment from the Bank of Baguettes is which of these nodes flash and which of them don't. Because remember, I'm going to be making a payment from the Bank of Baguettes to the Bank of Fondue, but the payment will be of US dollars issued by the Bank of, um, Bank of Big Apples. So let's see, which, um, let's see which banks are involved and which ones are not. So here on the left-hand side, I'm back at the Bank of, uh, Bank of Baguettes. If I look at my cash, here I am, I have my million dollars issued um, in pounds, so million pounds, and I have my um, half million US dollars. So let's make that payment. So this time it's a payment, and because Bank of Baguettes was not a cash issuer, I don't have the ability to issue cash. Um, the payee, I'm going to pay the Bank of Fondue. I'm going to pay US dollars, which we know are issued by the Bank of Big Apples. Immediately the platform tells me how much I have available. Let's send half of that, let's send a quarter of a million dollars. Now what we should watch for when I hit execute is what happens on the right hand side. Which of these nodes see the data, but more importantly, which ones don't. So let's click execute. And we look at that 
and we see that the bank of um, Big Apple was informed. Remember, this was a transaction across their books. This was a settlement in central bank money with finality, thanks to the notary that was also involved. So the, in, this, in, this, in this demonstration, we've configured it so the bank of Big Apple's got to see where its money was going. And then of course, also the bank of Baguette and the bank of Fondue saw the transaction. But critically, and a fundamental component of the Corder architecture, is the bank of breakfast tea saw absolutely nothing. There was no need for them to know about that transaction. Action. There's no need for them to approve it, authorize it, or report on it, so it was not shown to them. Okay, so that's the the um, the, the the key part of the of this, the simplest Corda demonstration with the demo bench and these Corda explorers. But there are two other things I am um, I want to show um, for slightly more advanced users, which also um, bring the the full power of Corda to people's attention. The first is if we switch back to the demo bench which is here. And you'll have noticed there's this text view down here. Um, this allows you to interact with the Corda node. This is for administrators um, and, and will be used when um, Corda is deployed in production by administrators to, um, to, um, to ensure it runs correctly and can be scripted and automated. Uh, there is a huge amount of, of powerful, um, power, there are a huge amount of powerful options here. You can start call of flows, you can, um, you can interrogate the node, um, and you can um, use it, to, for example, to um, do things like this. So you can run get cash balances. Um, so when you write code apps, you can extend this to allow people to interrogate the node. And here straight away, we can see there's $250,000. So you don't just need to use the user interface, you can interact directly with the platform. The second thing I wanted to show was, um, unlike some other blockchain platforms, um, let's go back to the bank of baguettes for this, unlike some other blockchain platforms, Corda thinks very hard about how to make the platform usable and productive for developers. Um, all too often we find with, um, with, with many blockchain platforms is that the data goes into them, but it's then very, very hard to, to report on or use um, elsewhere in the organization. But if you think about what we're trying to do with distributed ledgers, we're trying to bring parties who don't fully trust each other into consensus about facts they hold in common, their shared facts. In this case, cash balances, but it could be statuses of deals or, um, or, or trades or, or any other type of contract. And the reason we want to be in sync is because the rest of the organization relies on this data. Um, we may need to report on it. We may need to take other actions. Um, so it's not sufficient that it just gets trapped in the blockchain database. We need to be able to do two things. One, we need to be able to integrate with other applications. That's why Corda runs on the Java platform and can send any data um, to any authorized subscriber over traditional MQ messaging, something, which with, something with which all enterprises are familiar. Developers can write very simple code to subscribe to streams of data that get updated in real time whenever anything of relevance happens in the network. But we also offer the ability to, um, to, to integrate directly with relational databases. Corda runs on a relational database, um, and, um, and we allow users to join private data with information that's stored on the ledger. But we go further. So here is a view on the Bank of Baguettes' um, uh, database. And like other blockchain platforms, you can query um, you can query what's in the vault, as we call it. Um, but it's never particularly useful. These transaction IDs are just long hex strings. Um, you have timestamps. You've got information, but it's it's very hard to understand. It it's <clears throat> it's useful for for blockchain experts and, and blockchain fans, but but no use for business. So what we also do, and again, this is another unique feature in Corda, what we also allow developers to do is tell the platform, when you receive information or, you, or, or information on the network is updated, please populate a regular database table with specific information so that we can query it and join it with other data. So because we have the cache Corda app installed, we also have a cash balances table installed. Um, and rather than having these, these unusable hex strings, what the platform automatically does when um, the transaction is processed is, is update this table and, and keep, it, um, keep it up to date. So here we can see in relational form that can be queried with SQL, the cash balance that the Bank of Baguettes holds both in pounds and US dollars. And the key point here, of course, is that Corda, um, Corda supports um, a range of relational databases and you can join this data with, um, with any private data you hold yourself. 
So that's how to demonstrate um, um, Corda using the Corda demo bench. Um, it's available at corda.net slash downloads. And once you install it and run demo bench, it's exactly as we said at the beginning. You can run as many Corda nodes as you like or as your computer will support. They're automatically connected to each other as they start. They register with the network map. And you can use this to demonstrate how transactions move around the network, how Corda is event driven, and how you can use Corda to populate and maintain relational databases and integrate with the rest of the firm.